Hello everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on the time zone where you are attending the session from. So I would be uh, spending the next, uh, let's say, 20, 25 minutes to present uh, about our journey on leveraging open source for the realization of network slice and service orchestration in the indigenous end-to-end -end 5G testbed. Okay, so uh, I would like to split this presentation into two parts. The first part where I would be explaining about the the end-to-end -end 5G testbed, which is an uh, indigenous testbed, uh, which is like a, a countrywide testbed, which was uh, which is uh, being uh, developed in India. I'll go over the details of that, of the larger picture of the overall 5G testbed. And then the second part of my presentation will focus on the orchestration layer for the testbed, uh, wherein we successfully made use of open source in realizing what the testbed actually wanted. So this is in a nutshell. So without further ado, I'll just go directly into the uh, overview of the testbed. So this uh, 5G testbed, right? So this is an indigenous uh, 5G testbed, uh, which is like a nationwide testbed that is uh, in India. And it has been sponsored by the, the government of India. Uh, I mean, when I say sponsored, the, the sponsorship is for the academic and research institutions. Uh, the, the sponsorship is given. And it is also uh, consisting of, or there are also industry partners who are part of this uh, uh, testbed in terms of active contribution to the development of the testbed. Uh, and as well, I mean, providing the technology stacks or whatever, they do get different kinds of benefits or they, they stand to gain from it in different ways. So there are different models, but at the end of it all, it is a kind of a collaboration between academia research forums as well as industry and this is a nationwide testbed and i would say it is one of the i would say a few uh, let's say large scale nationwide testbeds uh, across the world so, and even in india in the previous generations also we have been having testbeds over like i said right this is a true kind of an end to end testbed for uh, 5g now, why do we want to have this uh, testbed in the first place, right? So one of the primary goals of this testbed is that uh, from a country standpoint, we want to be at the forefront of uh, the 5G development and deployment in the sense that we want to be uh, involved actively in the development of technology and not just be a consumer of technology as far as 5G is concerned. So uh, in terms of active contribution to IP creation, in terms of innovation, contribution to standards and so on. Uh, now, how, how does it, uh, I mean, uh, or why is it kind of important to us uh, as a nation, right? One of the things is, uh, some of you might already be knowing about the, the Make in India uh, initiatives where we are uh, focusing on uh, developing technology indigenously uh, within the country. So this is one of the kind of, I would say, the enablers for such initiatives. And the second reason or the important reason is uh, for initiatives like, for example, smart cities, uh, which the government of India is driving, right? So for all these kind of initiatives where we want a real kind of an environment to test some of the technological components as well as the solutions in a real world kind of setting, right? Not in a lab or not like partly, but from an end-to-end -end service or end-to-end -end use case kind of uh, setting. If we want to do, uh, I mean, a validation, right, of the solution, uh, for this also, this testbed is going to be quite useful. And in general, in building the 5G ecosystem, right, and when I say the ecosystem, maybe I'll elaborate a little more as we move forward in the country, right? So this testbed is going to be one of the key enablers. And how this is going to be realized, right? If you look at it, so one of the things is we would be scaling and evolving some of the test bits that are already existing. So in the, I mean, for example, in 4G also, there have been some efforts to build test bits. However, from an end-to-end -end point of view, it may not be still there and it re definitely requires some scaling as well as 
uh, enhancements and evolution. Uh, that the second aspect is to to come together right whether it is academia uh, or uh, research for our right maybe not one institution might be able to deliver or to realize or be able to realize all the components so to be able to collaborate and build the build the modules right grounds up uh, which are missing or which are needed for the end to end test and then the third is of course the industry partnerships where uh, I mean, active participation is sought from industry partners in terms of building this testbed. So, if I have to say uh, some a few key points, right, about this uh, overall testbed, one is the openness. So, this is an open testbed. Uh, you should note that it, I'm not talking. I mean, I'm not saying it is open source. It is open in the sense that anybody uh, can bring in their components whether it is ip or solution or in the case of like orchestration we are bringing like an open source uh, based approach so anybody can bring in their bring in their components you make use of the testbed contribute to the development of the testbed of course the benefits and the what is in it for each of the stakeholders right will be depend i mean will be different depending on their contribution and depending on their role so the openness is one important thing. Then the second thing is it, it kind of nurtures and builds the uh, ecosystem with respect to 5G in the nation. And the third key aspect of this overall testbed is it's that it is indigenous. So when I say it is indigenous, it means that it is either built grounds up uh, from within the country. Uh, I mean, whether it is academia or research or industry partners or we make use of open source. So typically we uh, we don't have, I mean, I would say not, uh, I mean, commercial components as part of the, uh, let's say the fundamental test bed, right? Obviously anybody, any vendor or any supplier or any product company can bring in their solution and validate their products or their IP or their solutions. But the test bed itself, right? The end to end test bed itself, it's kind of uh, indigenously built. So this this is the essential thing that I wanted to highlight. Now probably if you look at from uh, overall uh, for the for the participants who are contributing to this test bed, right? If you see, so you can see that uh, uh, the academic and the research partners are pretty much spread across the geography of the country, and they are the premier uh, institutes uh, that you can find within India. Uh, they are all uh, actively involved in the development of the testbed components and they do this activity in collaboration with the industry partners so the industry partners will touch upon a little while but uh, with respect to the uh, the reach and the accessibility right so because the the various i mean the, the partners involved in the development of the testbed are geographically spread apart the intention is that the testbed should be available as well as accessible to anyone within the country. So what this means is we will have multiple instances of the test bed running in different locations, but there may be some, okay, some variations, maybe certain specific components could be hosted only in certain locations. And the intention is also that people should be able to access it from anywhere they want, at least uh, from within the country. Okay, obviously subject to the, I mean, the, the model in which they are allowed to uh, access it. So if we look at the industry partners, you can see that there are quite a number of industry partners who are collaborating in terms of the actual development to the test bed, as well as they provide the required technology uh, for uh, stacks of the components. So I think this kind of illustrates that we do have active participants to the development of the test bed. Now, if you look at what this is being used for, right? what this test bed is used for. I mean, like I just touched upon briefly earlier that we want to develop the 5G ecosystem and we want to be at the forefront of technology development. Uh, but if you want to look at, look at it a little bit more and be a little bit more specific, right? So these are some of the uh, usages of the test bed that we foresee. So one is the the use of IPs. So first of all, as part of the de development of the testbed or creation of the testbed, uh, there will be a lot of IPs that will be generated. This is not uh, just about that. It is also about uh, people can bring their own IPs 
uh, and maybe they can do an interoperable interoperability uh, testing as well to validate their ips also they can all they can also give their own ips to the test bed obviously they will retain the ip rights in full because like i said this is not an open source test bed but this is an open test bed uh, so that that way it kind of promotes development of ip as well as the use of ip the second is r and d and product development uh, wherein the test bed can be uh, used as a real world kind of uh, testing ground or a playground for experimentation validating for the functional as well as the non functional tests interoperability you name it right so if this is going to be a key enabler and this is very very significant if you look at who can stand to benefit from it right it's not just the big players but for example take the case of a startup uh, they may not be able to afford uh, first of all to have a full fledged end to end 5g testbed number one number two is even if they can afford it it might take considerable effort and lead time and expertise to build a world class test bed right so from that angle also it's going to be useful and the same applies to any academic or research institution also while they may have their component specific or their i mean the interacting component uh, kind of a test bed a true end to end uh, test bed might not be that easy to realize and the third is to be able to develop services and applications right so application development is going to be one of the let's say we do not know whether it's going to be the killer thing for 5g but it's definitely going to be one of the key things that we see of, uh, see with respect to 5g especially because it is going to uh, address a lot of uh, industry vertical requirements in a custom made way right with the help of network slicing also so in that sense application development right whether it is edge applications or i mean like uh, user applications whatever it is right whatever kind of applications this test bed can be really going to help them also to kind of test their interoperability as well as the performance and other aspects and the last point is about the skill building which is very very essential from a country standpoint because we want to develop the the 5g uh, ecosystem and we want to generate a lot of uh, skilled r and d workforce within the country just to give you an example right uh, that this is a, a real thing and it's not just on paper as of now right uh, in this test bed about 400 to 500 engineers are actively i mean people are actively uh, contributing in some way or the other directly to the test bed and uh, as, I, mean, I mean i would expect some many more also to be involved indirectly or i mean not uh, i mean in in some form or other indirectly as well so this is a real thing and we want to take it very seriously from a country standpoint okay so there are different ways uh, in which uh, we can use the test bed i'll not go into the details uh, but one of the things is that uh, we could have we could have like an application developer plug in their apps into the test bed and do the testing the second thing could be that for example uh, uh, a product uh, company right a small startup who just want to develop uh, the l2 stack protocol stack right uh, for the gnode b they can just bring it in and plug it into the test bed and then do their validation and interoperability testing same same way somebody wants to develop a up right uh, the, then they can just plug it in a uh, testing and validation of their solution in the same way right you know, for example if uh, some a, a researcher they want to check or they want to test their algorithms obviously they will be testing their algorithms uh, but uh, from an end to end standpoint right what how their algorithms can affect the end to end for example call flow or the session right that they may not Layer for the five. What we have raised of the orchestration layer was raised as a partnership again. Uh, see it. Concern right. We considered uh, a few choices in terms of how we want to build the orchestration layer. So one is the from scratch development, 
uh, that is build it grounds up second is the open source based approach which is use the own app right the open network automation platform as the base and then make the necessary customizations and enhancements this is the second approach the third is a hybrid open source approach wherein we get some domain orchestrators or domain controllers like open daylight or open source mano and then implement the end-to-end -end orchestration functionality whatever is required the fourth one we did consider, but we didn't actually take it seriously because as I said, right, we want it to be an indigenous test bed. So we didn't really consider the use of third party commercial products, at least as part of the core test bed. Of course, any third party orchestrator company could plug in their orchestration solution and validate it. That's perfectly fine. But as part of the test bed, we didn't uh, prefer this option at all. Then we kind of uh, did a, I mean, a, a benefit versus challenges analysis. Uh, I'll not uh, read from this slide. Uh, but the, the, the bottom line is that yes, apart from the open source related assets. So considering all that, what we did necessary for our uh, test bed and some of the reasons uh, are like it, because it provides open and standard interfaces towards the network functions for the configuration fault and performance management and the other advantage of that we saw in ONAP was it provides the orchestration for all the three domains that is the RAN core and transport because we are really talking about an end-to-end -end 5G test bed so orchestration across domains is quite important. Then the other aspects, I think we all know it's microservices based and then we can interoperate with third party controllers and the support for 5G use cases, which is quite active in the community. Of course, one of the challenges in ONAP was the hardware requirements, but this is a challenge that we had to overcome anyhow. Okay, so the next slide tries to give a little bit of an overview where which components we have started customizing or enhancing. I will not get into the details here, but uh, this just gives you a, a flavor of some of the components that we have started uh, customizing and making suitable enhancements for our use cases. Uh, now, let me spend a couple of minutes on the use cases that we have been uh, working on uh, so far. So one of the first use cases that we picked up was the, uh, the having the 5G basic 5G use case, uh, which involves the RAN and the core, and uh, using ONAP as the end-to-end -end orchestrator, then may, may having an end-to-end -end service with the RAN and the core, and then sending some video traffic. So this was one of the first use cases because we believed that this would kind of set the stage for many more uh, use cases. Okay, so. This was the starting and then we successfully realized this use case last year and demonstrated it at the Indian Mobile Congress last October. So maybe I will just zoom in a little bit uh, on what this use case was about. So this use case, uh, like I said, right, it is about setting up the uh, RAM and uh, core service and having like an end-to-end -end traffic flowing from the UE towards the maybe like a video server. Okay, so the one of the first steps uh, templates and uh, onboard the service. After which we instantiate the service, and then the uh, once the service is instantiated, we will be spinning up the core network functions that are uh, part of the service uh, definition or the service template, and then we'll also uh, uh, wait for the PNF. So as far as the RAN is concerned, we modeled it as a physical network function. Uh, for the sake of simplicity to start with and then we wait for the physical network function to register itself with ONAP and once the registration process is completed we then push the remaining part of the configuration and once the configuration is uh, uh, completed then we start the traffic so that we can see the tra flow of traffic across the uh, network functions that has been instantiated by ONAP. So without going into too much of in-depth details this slide kind of gives you high level view of this step and the core BNF. Related artifacts.
function we do the design and the onboarding then we instantiate the service into end ran because this was also something that was in progress at the time we started with this one app journey so what we did was in order to demonstrate the end to end flow we used a ran emulator which then was able to establish a connection with the real amf uh, and then subsequently we had the steps of the ua getting registered and then the traffic flowing as part of the roadmap we will also be replacing this ran emulator with the real uh, ran or the real 5g nr so this we will see in the following slides so the next step that we embarked upon or which is like work in progress right now is the the simple closed loop control using own app obviously not everything is available readily in own app we had to make or we are in the process of making some enhancements here in order to realize it of course the basic closed loop functionality is there but for the way that we want we in this agent right for our use case not all the functionality is present so this requires some enhancements in the dcae and some enhancements in the so and cds as well as in the, the inventory as well so again i'll not go into the details of the onap components and these steps so this flow chart gives you the high level flow assuming that a 5g service is already active with 5g nr and 5g core network functions okay and if i have to just summarize it at a high level right uh, whatever steps are involved so the, the first few steps are some somewhat of a reuse of the phase one uh, use case work where we'll have to make some minor enhancements and then it will be up and running that is the design of the 5g service and then instantiating the 5g service and performing the initial configuration the key part for this phase is when we talk about closed loop control one of the key things in closed loop control is to have performance management data right that should flow continuously from the network functions and then based on the performance uh, data that is reported by the network functions you analyze them and then you take suitable uh, preventive or corrective actions now in this case what we assumed was uh, maybe i can just go on to the next slide uh, what we assumed was uh, we assume that the network functions already know which performance management data to report later on we will also support the creation of the measurement jobs right like what is defined in 3gpp and similarly with respect to the actual pm data we try to keep it quite simple so that uh, we uh, are able to show the end to end flows and then we will add many more uh, additional uh, pm data that we will look at for analysis so the idea is to demonstrate a full fledged closed loop for a 5g service that was the whole intention this is a work in progress just maybe spending a minute or two on the lessons that we have learned so far right at least uh, specifically focusing on the orchestration part uh, so what we saw was this open source based approach right it enabled the industry partners right so we could work in close collaboration and we could have like a clear work split so depending on their areas of expertise maybe one partner was very uh, i mean kind of hands on and skilled in deploying go app while another partner had the skills to develop some of the i mean implement some of the enhancements while some one, another partner had uh, a good experience in integrating go app with the network functions so that way we could clearly define the work split and we could work in close collaboration across multiple industry partners which typically could be quite challenging right from an operational standpoint and it also enabled us to kind of explore as well as innovate and apart from that there was a good amount of learning for each of the partners involved and this open source based approach kind of simplified our needs and it also fulfills the test beds current and the future needs with respect to the uh, what is needed from a test bed uh, standpoint right in, in terms of the functionality Uh, but what we also realized right during this whole journey we also needed not only a full fledged orchestrator like onap but we also want a simple interface if we want to just monitor or use the test bed right not focusing on anything about orchestration or anything but just i want to see the health of the test bed or i want to maybe restart a vm or restart a vnf or whatever right without looking about the integrities of the end to end orchestration so for that we may need a, a simple interface you can call it like a simple network management function or an element management function whatever it might be or a simple management layer so this is something that we have started developing and we will be working further to realize it
And the same way, we will also need a mediation layer for the network functions to report the PMFM data so that we can keep the network functions the testbed agnostic to the orchestration layer. Because tomorrow, if we want to bring in another orchestrator, right, we don't want to impact the network functions in terms of CMPM and FM interfaces. So this is also something that we have started upon. And uh, I'll not spend too much time for the roadmap. So these are just this is just to give you a flavor of what we want to uh, roadmap. So the next step. Currently, we have the closed loop only with the core of IG core. We want to also extend it to the RAM and later on to the uh, transport also. And then also, we also want to start with the network slicing related functionality because network slicing in ONAP open source that is just taking off in the Frankfurt and Quillen release where we are also actively involved. So we want to leverage that as well. And then we go into the advanced scenarios. Okay, maybe I'll just uh, spend a few seconds uh, before concluding and then leaving some time for Q&A. So what we have done as part of this orchestration journey, right? So we have successfully used ONAP open source as the base and then made suitable enhancements or customizations in order to fulfill the indigenous testbeds requirements. Okay, and uh, what we also anticipate, right? Once the, uh, I mean, since now we have a very good base that is established, we expect a lot of innovation to happen in the orchestration plane itself because network automation is a subject that is very active in the industry today in including aml or with even without it so we expect a lot of innovations to happen and we hope that the testbed will be like a an enabler for such innovations to happen and so far whatever we have seen right the the journey it has been like a, a mutually beneficial one so we have been able to deliver some outcome to the testbed at the same time, all the industry and the research partners who are involved in the development of the orchestration plane, we have been able to get something from it. So in that sense, it was mutually beneficial. And I hope this is a kind of, a, I won't say a lesson or a case study, but it can be looked up as an example of successful academia, research and industry collaboration, leveraging of open source in order to uh, I mean, realize a higher objective and deliver some tangible outcome. Thank you all. Thank you very much for your patience in listening. And I would be very happy to take any questions that you may have. Thank you very much once again.